how to teach your dog not to bite. Dogs are wonderful creatures that teach us a lot about unconditional love, loyalty, and tenacity. However, like us, they are not perfect and are prone to some undesirable behaviors. Biting is one such behavior, and today we will be looking at steps you can take to stop it. With millions of dog attacks taking place every year, owners need to step up and play their part. The following video is your guide in this mission, and hopefully, we can help make our communities a little safer. Hello World According to canine behaviorists, a lot of dog bites are a result of anxiety around unfamiliar environments and individuals. Dogs may be fearful and choose to attack before they themselves can come to harm. These anxieties and their consequences are the reason why most dog training experts strongly recommend socialization. Socialization is, in a nutshell, a familiarization course for your dog. The more people and animals your dog encounters with your reassurance, the better socialized he'll be. The familiarity with different people means he will be less likely to freak out or attack when you're walking among people. A well-socialized dog should be able to walk in a crowd of people and other dogs without paying them too much mind. This kind of exposure teaches your pet that the world is filled with people and fellow animals just going on about their business. It's best to begin socializing your dog as early as possible. Puppies are a blank canvas, so the process is easier for them. Adult rescues might need more time, especially if trauma is involved, but they usually come around. Unfortunately, some dogs might be too far gone for trust. These animals are a constant danger to people and fellow animals and are often put down as a result. It's also important to avoid complacency with this measure. No dog is ever fully socialized, and there is always more to learn. Socialization is a lifelong process. Snip before he snaps. Many dog owners choose to fix their furry pals to prevent uncontrollable litters. However, did you know that spaying and neutering have a marked effect on aggression? Male dogs with their testicles chopped off produce much lower levels of testosterone than unfixed boys. Testosterone is responsible for muscle growth, coat sheen, and many other things. It is also the driving force behind a dog's aggression, hierarchy ambitions, and desire to mate. In nature, aggression is needed for hunting and fighting other males for territory, dominance, and females. However, in the home, furniture and shoes are the typical victims of canine machismo. In more serious cases, people and fellow pets suffer vicious attacks. Female dogs are, generally speaking, less violent than males. However, they can be just as dangerous as the boys when they get overprotective of pups. Marauding males are known to kill puppies on occasion, so some moms are on high alert. Spaying eliminates a dog's ability to have puppies, which then eliminates this duty to protect. Scientists also suggest that spaying results in the loss of hormones like estrogen, which can influence maternal instincts. Canine Cadet Obedience training is imperative for a dog to live peacefully in society. This is doubly true for large, dangerous breeds like Mastiffs and Great Danes. Without proper training, some of these dogs are essentially unpredictable weapons. You can train your dog yourself, or you can get help from seasoned professionals. If you don't have licensed dog trainers nearby, you could inquire with your local police. The cops often have canine programs that are open to civilian pooches. You definitely want your dog to master basic discipline commands like heal and stay. Sniffing out bombs and cocaine might be unnecessary. With discipline down pat, you will have a bit of control if awkward situations arise. A timely heel or down girl could stop a potential attack at the last second. Without training, your dog could easily maul someone while ignoring your frantic cries. Not only does obedience training teach a dog how to respond in certain situations, but it reaffirms your status as the master. You essentially become the filter your dog runs its decisions through, which can save lives. Much like socialization, training is a lifelong thing. Keep on reinforcing commands, offering treats, and correcting bad behavior. Ow! One clever way to train out nibbling is to show your dog that her bites hurt. For safety reasons, we recommend doing this with younger dogs. Puppies may also be ignorant of the impact of their bites. What you want to do is exclaim in pain whenever the dog bites you, even if it doesn't hurt. If you're playing, immediately stop the game so the dog sees that something is wrong. Massage the bite spot furiously to emphasize the effect. 
Even at a young age, dogs are incredibly empathic. Seeing you in pain because of his actions will make your pup feel bad about biting. With time and continued reinforcement, the dog should put two and two together. Bite equals pain for humans. You may also get other people to react to your dog's bites in this way so he knows that it hurts everyone. Of course, this measure should be combined with socialization and obedience training. The dog will become much gentler with his play biting and much less likely to bite aggressively. Chew on this. Biting is a natural part of dog behavior, as shown by their affinity for chewing sticks, bones, and your favorite stilettos. Without a proper channel for these instincts, innocent people might find themselves on the menu. Enter Chew Toys, the simple yet genius solution for nippy pups. Chew Toys are durable but safe for your dog's teeth, which means you can happily let them go at them for hours. Just ensure to keep Chew Toys clean to stop bacteria from festering. Also, keep an eye on wear and tear, as damaged toys may develop sharp edges that can harm your dog. We recommend multiple chew toys so that your dog won't get bored and start nibbling on other things around the house. Additionally, you should actively discourage the dog from chewing on things that aren't his chew toys. With time, he will learn that his toys are his only permissible biting outlet. Read my lips. In many cases, dogs will issue a warning before biting. This usually comes in the form of growls and snarls. Many owners are guilty of discouraging their pets from growling at people, which may take away this warning stage. Without any other means of communicating his fear, anxiety, or annoyance, the dog may just skip straight to attack mode. Therefore, instead of discouraging the behavior, you must take note of the situations that cause your dog to start growling. Does she only snarl at a specific person or animal? Does he tend to growl more in certain places? Figuring this out will help you determine the legitimacy of your dog's growls. In most cases, growls will be a result of anxiety or inexperience in certain situations. The next step would be to use exposure, mainly through socialization, and reassurance to show your dog that there's nothing to worry about. With time and patience, your dog will be more comfortable in growl-triggering scenarios and less likely to bite. Show, don't tell. In addition to growls, dogs usually give body language-based signs before launching an attack. It's crucial for you to know these clues and prevent disaster. One of the first body language cues is a stiff tail pointed upwards. Some dogs may also wag their tails, which may be confusing because this is often associated with happiness. However, dogs may also wag their tail when they are afraid or annoyed, emotions that can prompt attacks. Another sign is overall stiffness. If your dog looks like he's had some eye contact with Medusa, he may be in fight or flight mode in response to some person or animal. This stiffness is usually in the back, neck, and leg muscles. If the dog chooses fight, this will manifest in an attack. Another sign to look out for is perked up ears. Again, this may mean many different things, but it generally indicates a dog on alert mode. Your dog may simply be tuning into local doggy radio or he may be about to lunge at somebody. Next, you want to note the dog's posture. Many times dogs will, uh, posture to make themselves look bigger as a warning for an impeding attack. This involves standing with the chest out and the legs in a widened stance. Think of a UFC fighter at the promotional weigh-in. Posturing is how dogs try to communicate their strength before actually committing to violence. Depending on the dog, these may just be threats, However, some dogs are really about that life and will attack if not stopped. We strongly encourage owners to be on the lookout for these signs, especially if the dog is displaying all of them at once. Just like growling, these signs may indicate anxiety or fear based on certain scenarios. You will have to use training, exposure, and positive reinforcement to coach this behavior out.